a common mistake that we humans make is that we think that joy or happiness and pleasure are the same thing. There's a lot of words for happiness in Hebrew. You have chedva, aliza, simcha, and the same thing in English. We have happiness, joy, exuberance, right? We fill in the blank. And there is a difference between those words. The etymology of the word happiness, the root of the word happiness is um, comes from the word hap, which is by chance. And um, our society puts so much focus on happiness, which they equate as pleasure. And there's such a difference between pleasure and joy. Pleasure releases the dopamine feeling. So like when you get a hit on your like on your phone or a text message, that's a fleeting feeling that comes and that feels good and it just disappears. Joy and happiness, which is not the same as pleasure, is something that comes from something that you did, that you worked on. Like happiness is an inside job. It's not something that other people can do for you. It's something you have to do for yourself. So for example, if you wake up in the morning, you say, oh, well, if my kid's in a good mood, I'm going to be happy. If my husband smiles at me, I'll be happy. You're putting your happiness in somebody else's um, hands. And the truth is, it's happiness is my own. It's not if my mother did the right thing or my father said the right thing to me. It's rather, wait, I'm choosing to wake up today. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to choose happiness. Because pain is universal. It's everyone experiences pain. But suffering is something that we can choose to d- decide to be. Do we want to be Um, suffering or not. It's a choice that we have. Um, And it's an important thing to realize is that even though society around us puts such an emphasis on pleasure that if you get this job, you go this degree, or if you get that car, then you'll be happy. And then you come to that place and you're like, wait, I'm not so happy. And then if you realize that true happiness comes from yourself, from your own work that you do, that will help you be able to navigate and to have more happiness in your life. I actually heard an incredible explanation on the Shema prayer. In the Shema, it says, you should love Hashem with your whole heart. And Rashi asked the question, one of the commentaries asked, what does that mean, with your whole heart? And he explains, you should love them. First, he says, with your both inclinations, with your evil inclination and your, and your good inclination. And then he adds another line. And he says, another thing, your heart shouldn't be in a fight with Makom, which is another reference for Hashem. It's the way Hashem fills all the spaces. You shouldn't be in a fight with God. And one of the explanations on this is a very powerful message that I really take to heart and really focus on. It helps me a lot in my life. That what it means you shouldn't be in a fight with God, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't question God. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have your challenges, questions to what God is giving us. But rather, it means here in this root of the word, makom actually means what it, the translation loosely translated as space or place. Your heart shouldn't be in a fight with the place that you find yourself in. So many of us are so busy fighting the space we find ourselves geographically, economically. We tell ourselves, oh, I'm going to be happy when, you know, when I have that job or when I get married, then I'll be happy. If I have a baby, I'll be happy. When I get that in the, that car, I'll be happy. We make all these spaces. And if I only had this, if I didn't, if I wasn't stuck in this family or this situation or this difficulty, then I'd be happy. And the truth is, is if you're busy fighting the space, you can't be at peace with the space. Two feelings can't be going on at the same time. One has to take precedent over the other. The idea here is, is that it's not that we shouldn't be in a fight with God, but rather we shouldn't be in a fight with the space that we find ourselves in. We have to be at peace with the space and realize that God has chosen this space, this place for us. And there's something here for us, something for us to grow from. Click subscribe to see more exclusive content for the most sought after Jewish speakers, teachers, and thinkers.